Hey folks, it's Shane from Forms EV. Today we're going to keep on working on our electric Porsche. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. Now, up until recently, we've, we've probably got about 80% of a car here. Um, it's ready to go and I know that the motor runs and everything. And I've been trying to get the battery into the car and I've done a lot of measurements. I've got a lot of work done around figuring out how I'm gonna mount it. And over the last few weeks, I've been trying to progress actually getting those mounts built. Um, along with a couple of other things on the car and I've just been failing miserably I think is the term you'd use and I kind of took a step back the other day and just thought why am I not progressing things I've, I've realized I've been approaching it a bit bit skewed a little bit wrong um, for one thing I've been trying to do too many things at once too many little jobs at once and the other problem is I just don't have the space for what I need to do with the car in the garage. So while I have a decent sized garage, um, it's perfect for working on the car if you've just got to take bits off, bolt bits on, that sort of thing. I've got the quick jack lifts which get it up in the air which are fantastic. Um, but as soon as you need to make something, like in this case the battery box and battery box mounts and that sort of thing, it um, gets a little bit cramped. And when you combine that with kind of a bit of storage for either bits I've taken off the Porsche or bits from the Leaf that I still want to use. So I've still got all like the, the wiring harness and the um, charging cables and stuff that I still need to use uh, and the battery itself sitting to one side. I, I It's really crammed and basically I found myself trying to work in a corner uh, doing any sorts of bits of fabrication, but that kind of melt meant I could use one tool at a time. So I have to go in, grind, cut and shape some metal and then put all that stuff away and get the welder out and then do some welding and getting, you know, odd angles and, and yeah, just basically winding myself up and trying to do it. So we're giving up on that approach. I need the space. I've got the space, there's just a car in the middle of the way. So the only solution, get the car out of the way. But I don't have any um, wheels on it. The hubs are currently disconnected from most of the suspension arms and there's no battery. So even though the motor's still in it, it's not gonna be able to go anywhere. So I'm probably gonna end up having to push it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is get the wheels back on. Uh, so get the hubs bolted in place, even though they've got no uh, drive shafts or anything going into them and get the wheels bolted back on securely, get the car down off the quick jacks push it out the garage, which isn't too difficult, that's doable. Uh, but my driveway's on a slight slope, so we're gonna have to try and manhandle it uh, up that slope a bit. Uh, you know, I needed some exercise anyway. But yeah, um, join me as I see if I can get this done. So here's part of our problem. Um, in order to get the drive shafts off, I had to remove uh, different bits of the suspension, um, mainly just the, the kind of control arms, dog bones, that sort of thing. I do want to replace these at some point the um the bushes are pretty rough looking um not in great nick at all but i was kind of hoping i'd do that and just kind of button them up once i think what i'm going to do is just accept bolting these bits back in very briefly get the car out and maybe even while it's outside just doing one corner at a time get the um get the new parts in but yeah um let's get this bolted back in all right, there we have it. We've got one wheel on. We've got a pretty empty engine bay. And we've got the other wheel on. So now we just need to get the battery box out of there and the jack stands on the engine. Mm-hmm. 
So that was a tough job on, on my own. Uh, the car is still heavy even with the engine and transmission out. So all I want to do now is one last thing and that's basically get the transmission and motor out of the car um, so I can work on building mounts for it properly. Uh, in order to do that I want to just mark a couple things up so I know where everything goes back to and I can make the mounts sensibly. Um, and then we'll have this space nice and clean and I can actually start to dismantle a few things from it and get it uh, the, to where I want it to be. So I got the car out of the garage, plenty more space because of that, still not enough for what I want to do. Got all these boxes here for some reason, no idea how that happened. Um, I might have gone a bit nuts on various online shopping forums, channels, uh, probably due to lockdown or something. Um, but basically over the last couple of months I've been scouring out finding the best deals for the best quality products I can get my hands on and I have I think here basically pretty much everything to overhaul the suspension on the car wasn't my initial plan but as I said earlier in the video when I kind of took the wheels off uh, the wheel carriers off in order to get the uh, shafts out to, to send them off to get made up I noticed just how rough looking some of the um, yeah, some of the bushings were in, in the various, you know, control arms and everything. And, you know, this is a 130,000 mile car, 20 years old. It's, it has seen better days. Um, it has had its, its issues. And, you know, this, it's a car known for its handling. Um, for, for all that people were upset at, at Porsche, you know, moving away from the air-cooled uh, engine and, and going to the water-cooled for this model and for all its detractors it it was a step forward for the the company and the the car itself was actually pretty good and and you know it handled well and, and that was one of the things that came out of all the the media at the time and i don't want to go to all this effort to you know put the electric engine in the car and then the future effort that i'm going to have to go to to get it producing the power that i want to to then have a car that doesn't actually handle. Um, I'm not building this to, to go fast in a straight line. I want to be able to, to drive it on fun roads and, and get places. So with that said, I decided at some point that I was going to probably overhaul the suspension and it seems somehow that point has uh, come about now. So why don't we, um, yeah, lash into these boxes, see what's in there, and I'll take you through all the components that we're gonna replace. First off, we've got the kind of core of the system, the shocks. Um, I did consider going down the coilovers route, but to be honest, these cars are, are known for handling. It's going to be more than good enough for my skills. Um, so there's no point in trying to mess with something that's already really well designed. So I've gone with the Bilstein. Bilstein are the OE manufacturer for certainly this generation of Porsche. I think they probably still are. And um, I've gone for kind of one step up from the standard that came in this so that was what Bill Stein called their B4 and this is the B8 so that's um, a little bit more sport oriented but still suitable for kind of daily driving on normal roads um, so I'm looking forward to getting these put in the car they'll definitely be a big improvement on the rusty old things that are in there at the moment and then to go with these we've got replacement top mounts for the front um, these are ridiculously expensive for the rear, so I'm hoping that the ones on the rear are 
in good enough nick they they should be they, they don't undergo the same um kind of different forces that the, the ones at the front do because the the ones at the front you've got, you've got to have kind of the pivot side of things in there and then also to go with that we've got our drop links to connect the suspension the shocks to the control arms um, so that will get bolted in the same time as these so while most people focus on the the shocks and springs you know people get coilovers or they get lowering springs or whatever those are only one part of a suspension system there's a lot more that goes into it to connect the wheels which are moving all over the place to the car which is relative to what the wheels are doing pretty static um so i've got all the rest of the components as well so here we've got our upper control arms also called known as dog bones for obvious reasons um yeah not much to say about these these are not oe but they are a pretty decent manufacturer haven't read anything too bad about them they come with a two-year warranty so we are going with these but the porsche suspension design is it's a modern sports car so it, it's not a simple piece so we've got two um control upper control arms on the rear on each side so that's four of those and then you've actually got a total of three different types of arms for the lower and let's look at those So for the front of the wheels, uh, both front and rear, it's basically a, a kind of two-piece control arm setup, um, which bolts to the to the wheel on at this point here, or the wheel hub carrier, and then you've got a kind of two-piece component like that that attaches to the sub different parts of the subframe, just giving you the the necessary support for for the wheel. Um, so these are actually produced for a company that are pretty much just down the road from me. I reckon I could drive there in about 15 minutes. They're Porsche specialists, um, but they have one of the the main kind of OE manufacturers producing stuff under their brand. Um, so I figured I'd give them a try and yeah, I've got no affiliation to this company, but um, certainly impressed by what I've read about them and will probably go and maybe give them a visit at some point once the car is up and running because I've heard they're pretty good at doing alignment. So this comes basically pretty much as a pack, uh, enough to do all four wheels. Um, I've got everything I need there. So that'll go in. These will go in. These will go in along with the shocks and the kind of supporting pieces. So that's cool. Then we've got this box. So most of the components that I've bought for this um, bit of the project have been new. Uh, there's, you know, For a lot of those things, there's no point in buying secondhand. They are available at pretty reasonable prices, new. The one area where I did have to buy secondhand is for the wheel carriers. So this is what attaches basically the suspension to the wheel hubs and then onto the wheels. Um, basically the two that I have, one is already damaged and I reckon the other one is going to get damaged as I try and remove the um, handbrake, parking brake, so or the cables for that anyway. So what I've done is I've bought a couple of parts from a much lower mileage car and I'm going to clean them up, make sure they're in as good condition as I can get them and then just basically replace the broken ones that are on the car. So that's what should be in this box. Um, let's see. So yeah, so those are all kind of the parts we've got to install on the car. Um, I'm probably gonna prioritize getting those done over the next couple of weeks, just so I can get rid of all these boxes. Um, you know, any parts that are 
trash I'll just get throw, throw out anything that's potentially reusable by someone I'll throw up on eBay or something um, but yeah we, we kind of these things have just been collecting up over the last few months and now they're taking up too much space so we're going to get the suspension sorted so step one on these bits is probably going to be strip them down there's kind of some bits I don't need um, where I've got replacement parts anyway and so they'll be fit on um, and yeah just basically cut them back to the bare bones of what I need clean them up properly make sure they're in the best order they can be um, and then get them installed on the car and bolt everything back up so then with those out of the way get on with the kind of welding stuff and um, yeah just get this process moving forward um, so I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, update on, on where we are and getting trying to get things moving again um, and that you'll join me for the the next video um, if you liked what you've seen you're not already subscribed please consider subscribing as always comments are greatly appreciated um, you know I'm, I'm glad that people have found some of these videos useful I'm sure some are less useful than others but I think I think some have been of, of benefit um, but yeah till till next time thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon <laughs>